This is Defenders TV Podcast, episode 72, where the Summer of Strange continues as we look and delve into Doctor Strange, the TV movie, 1978. Welcome back, Defenders, to this episode of Defenders TV Podcast. We're on episode 72, and we're looking at the Doctor Strange TV movie, or TV pilot, um, from 1978. So welcome to the time warp, uh, the psychedelic, trippy, drug-fueled time warp that is... Doctor Strange in 1970. Um, I'm one of your hosts, John. I feel like I should have been going underneath <laughs> everything you said there. I'm one of your other hosts, Derek. And out of the astral plane, back for good, is Chris. Yes, Chris is back with us. Yay! We've Welcome been... back, Chris. Thank you. Welcome back. Thank you, the I am a gato. I'm a gato. Yes, you've been watching us from your yeah. astral plane. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yeah. I, I also, by the way, guys, I'm going to, with Doctor Strange... I'm going to get every pronunciation wrong. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Don't worry, they get they get a few wrong uh, themselves as well. Uh, yes, uh, listeners, we've been holding off on our review of the Doctor Strange series because we wanted to bring Chris through uh, the experience of Doctor Strange, really. We've been holding off on the review of the TV movie specifically because we know Chris has never seen it before. And it's an exciting one to go back to the 70s and see what they were doing at the time with such, I suppose, smaller CGI budgets, smaller budgets overall for these kind of programming. And interesting to see Chris's thoughts uh, being being the youngest one of, <laughs> of the three of us, uh, as what he would think of a, a show set in the 70s. I was only type. one year old. Yes. Yeah. I, I, no, so I it's not that I remember it. <laughs> yes, I know. I know. I am Don't a child remember of, when you were a child of one? I know. Come I am on. a child of the 80s. Are you sure you didn't Aww. see this young on when you were when you were a kid and this nope. formed your opinion about Doctor Strange? I remember Spider-Man. I remember The Incredible Hulk. Mm-hmm. But I don't remember this Doctor Strange uh, TV pilot. But of course, like in that sense, the TV between the US and say the UK, it just wouldn't have been as transferable as it is no. like today. So uh, this would have been for North America's eyes only. Yeah. Yeah. This, uh, this aired once in the US on CBS, same channel that produced both uh, the, the shows that John mentioned, the Spider-Man and, um, and the Incredible Hulk. Uh, this was supposed to be the third of their very successful series of shows, uh, but didn't make it, unfortunately. We'll probably talk about it as we go into the episode. Um, but yes, a, a show like that, having one pilot airing once, never aired again, uh, never transferred to the UK and Ireland. Uh, I think early 90s, we probably saw it on the Sci-Fi Channel or it was released on the Sci-Fi Channels um, over over in Europe, maybe at some point. But yeah, definitely, this is something that I caught up on sometime in, in the noughties, I think. I, I saw my I saw it. Uh, available, bought it, watched it, uh, but that would have been the first time I think I saw it. Yeah, and I mean, I suppose really um, drugs might help with this, uh, <laughs> for listening to this podcast. Um, drugs may have helped watching the TV mm-hmm. uh, pilot of Doctor Strange. Um, very trippy, uh, very psychedelic, very um, 1970s music, mm-hmm. um, discordant, wow, wow, funky, wow, wow, wow. Um, yeah, a wacka wack wow, uh, <laughs> All that kind of thing. Um, but yeah. we will we will want to stress here, none of us took any drugs watching. <laughs> Whilst watching this uh, TV show. No. Just while watching this. <laughs> <laughs> it was like taking drugs. But I think before we get into our trippy endeavour as well, this is our Summer of Strange. And we do have a competition for all the listeners. The competition uh, is please leave a review on iTunes for us. Um, it helps people to find the podcast. It also uh, provides us with great feedback. So any uh, reviews on iTunes or any other good podcast catcher, if you can, uh, please do so. And uh, the prizes are a pop uh, Doctor Strange mm-hmm. um, figurine. It's also um, the Prelude... Uh, comics uh, prior to the Doctor Strange movie coming out in October, November of this year with yeah. Benedict Cumberbatch. And we also have the Way of the Weird uh, digital copy as well for people to uh, use the code uh, and download. That's so right. um, that's our competition. And of course, you can find us to review at defenderstvpodcast.com 
forward slash iTunes or search Defenders TV podcast on any other good, evil, mystical, magical, yin or yang podcast catcher, um, such as Stitcher, Player FM, Podcast Addict. Um, so please just head over there, leave a review, and you will be in for, with a shout to uh, win the prizes that we have uh, on offer for our Summer of Strange, all leading to the movie in 2016, the only movie of any worth, which is <laughs> Doctor Strange. Oh, I so hope you're not going to be disappointed by this. I probably time. will. <laughs> but I think we're going to set the bar low with, uh, with the 1970s Doctor Strange. You can Strange. only get better. Yeah, so I think we're, we're going to start off there. But some of our longer term listeners will know that while we're on our breaks between the uh, Defender series on Netflix, that we do these kind of competitions. Really, it's to kind of make sure that we get some kind of reviews on iTunes. It helps people to pick up the podcast uh, and hopefully we give something back to our listeners that have been listening to us and are faithfully staying with us through some of the more um, enduring of the Marvel uh, the Marvel properties, I suppose. Uh, so I think it's time to get into Doctor Strange, the TV pilot from 1978. Um, this was created as a pilot for the TV show and fortunately didn't get picked up. So we only have Ooh. this one version of the show. Uh, it's an hour and a half pilot uh, trying to set up the universe uh, for a, a, an ongoing series. Um, the This version of the show was written by Peter the Gare uh, and directed by him as well. Uh, with apparently the most input from Stan Lee of any of the three shows that were on CBS. So I think that's quite interesting to, to call out. Stan Lee had a lot of involvement in this. Yeah, he was on as a show. consultant. Yeah. yeah, yeah. but he said in an interview in 1985, 1986, that this was the one he had most input in, in ver- versions of uh, Incredible Hulk and, and uh, uh, Amazing Spider-Man, despite being uh, a major creative behind that he didn't have any input in the storylines or anything like that. So this was his this was his big one. John, do you want to tell us what Peter gave us in his in your synopsis for the episode? Sure. The protector of Earth, the ancient one, known as Linma, played by John Mills, races to pass on his knowledge of the mystic arts to another young sorcerer as the barriers separating Earth from the dark dimensions start to crumble. As the Nameless One, played by David Hooks, sends the evil sorceress Morgan Le Fay, Jessica Walter, to destroy the wizard Linma, or his successor and claim dominion over Earth, a psychiatrist, Dr. Stephen Strange, played by Peter Hooten, becomes increasingly drawn into a world he never knew existed. Psychically connected to his patient Clear Lake, played by Anne-Marie Martin, used as a pawn by Le Fay to destroy Linma, uh, Stephen Strange's only way to save her, Linma, and humanity is to delve into the hermetic and mystical arts and discover his true purpose in the world as the new Sorcerer Supreme of the Earth. Very, very cool. Uh, a couple of changes from the origin story that uh, that we know and talked about on our Strange 101 podcast, which you may have just heard. A um, couple of changes to that. But pretty much on on track with, with some of the creations, yeah. yeah. Um, so overall, Chris, do you want to kick us off with just a quick overview of what you thought of this version of Doctor Strange? I think my text to you guys, we have a group going just for when we kind of chatter. <laughs> and uh, I think the first three minutes in, I literally said, what the hell are you making me watch? <laughs> Followed by a series of... Ever increasing scared gifs, mm-hmm. gifs, I should say. Um, it's unique. Yes. It is very unique. And I think that's probably, did I enjoy it? Yeah. Like it was fun. Mm-hmm. Um, I, but it's a bit of rough going for the first kind of yeah. like 30 minutes or yeah. so. Yeah. Like it's basically Monk or, uh, Dr. Quincy. And you're like, <laughs> what's going on here? I was like, this doesn't make any sense. Uh-huh. Um, and even looking back, like, I think they, they tried so hard and you can see that. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, I have seen the Spider-Man and the, the Incredible Hulk and you can see where they pulled some unique takes on the, the, on the, the overall, uh, Doctor Strange, but, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's difficult to know where it would have gone for an episode two, yes. basically. Yeah. Um, like, it's a really good setup, but it, it's difficult to know. But I, I suppose you could have involved Dracula and Frankenstein and all those kind of things. Yeah, there but, were a couple of allusions to that yeah. in the episode, weren't there? Yeah. But, um, no, similar to you, um, I, this is kind of a, you look, you'll love it or you'll hate it. You'll mm. look at it fondly or you'll just look at it and go, what the hell? I mean, you know, if, if the time gen really is in the eye of Agamotto for for the movie, then uh, thank goodness. Because, I mean, 
time is the problem for this this yes. show. <laughs> it, it is the fact that it was done in the 70s, low budget. I mean, don't be expecting high def visuals. Oh, yeah. And there is persistent noise in terms of like basically instead of waterboarding, soundboarding. <laughs> I mean, again, the first time I watched it, I think I had a headache after 15, 20 minutes because the music, which actually I, it really grew on me, really liked, yeah. became so discordant and increasingly intense that mm-hmm. I was like... I just so don't be what? expecting that. Expect plenty of mustaches. Mm-hmm. Um, the music really was like Hans Zimmer's Joker score from Doctor from the Dark Knight. Um, just repeated, like really deep, uh, epic kind of evil sounding, uh, <laughs> sounding violins and yeah, really really dark strings. Um, yeah, for my part for this for this version of the show, uh, I definitely think you need to get through about twenty minutes of it, um, which means you're going through two full ad breaks if you were watching this on TV. You'd have to get through about two full ad breaks, and then there's a there's a moment where Doctor Strange enters the dream world of Clear Lake, uh, and from that point onwards, I think it's actually really really interesting. Yeah. I think it's really really good, and I did enjoy it. Now, John, what what did you think on the on the actual episode itself? Just a general overview. No, I, I think I watched it fondly. I mean, I mm-hmm. think I reminisced. Um, on Doctor Strange and ultimately, yeah, it's great visuals. I, I think it really <laughs> connects in with uh, Ditko's like psychedelic art. Certainly, when you move into um, the second half of, of the 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 TV pilot, so I, I really liked it. I think it's you'll either love it or hate it. It'll be Marmite, effectively. Yeah. Um, you won't be able to deal with it because it is kind of so old and a bit dodgy. As I say, you know. It's not the best visuals. Um, it's not the sound can be a bit irritating and persistent. <laughs> and there's a lot of mustaches, as I said, and a lot of those kind of glances to camera, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, if, if that bothers you, then you're probably not going to like it. But I mean, if you reminisce about, you know, TV shows of old, well, then. It's it's a good watch, and actually, it gets better as it moves through. I think definitely. And one thing I will say, listeners, if you hear the words "great" and "fantastic" and "good," I think just in your mind, just add the term "for the time." I think that's okay for the three of <laughs> yeah, us, isn't it? Definitely. Yeah. So if we hear, if we say the words "great," we are thinking yeah. about for the time. So we do understand if this was a show on TV, it probably wouldn't have gotten a full series if it came out now. Um, but I think overall we're we're pretty divide everything we say by ten. Basically, <laughs> uh, we might be getting carried away with um, Doctor Strange, the TV movie. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's time to go into our top five points. The way we cover our episodes, if you're joining us for the first time for Summer of Strange, is that we talk about our top five points about the episodes. Some good, some bad. There may be some bad in here, um, but they may cross over as well. So we may not have a full fifteen points for you, but we do have our top fives. Chris, do you want to kick us off with your first point about Doctor Strange, the TV pilot? Yeah. So I'm going to go in with a kind of an analogy for the our younger listeners, probably kind of my age in your late 20s, early 30s. But we weren't around for this and we're trying to, I was trying to, what would this be now if it was released now? Mm-hmm. This would be Grey's Anatomy mm-hmm. with magic <laughs> Nice. And a hell of a lot of porn stashes. <laughs> I think that's the best analogy I can give it. I like it. It, it, it it's a, a hospital procedural mm-hmm. for the first 20 to 30 minutes. There's a lot in there. Like they, there's that boardroom meeting where they all start talking about patients. Yeah. And you're like, this is going on. Like I was like, three minutes. Okay. They'll be ending. No, four minutes. Okay. <laughs> five. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Why do we care about the, the, like there was a lot of, you could see that they were trying to set up so much more mm-hmm. that this would be Doctor Strange, life in the hospital versus life in the um, the mystical kind of yeah. plane area. Um, but no, it, I I say this with like with it was probably if this had have gone on, I think this would have been as good or perhaps better than the Incredible right. this time, right? Um, because what they did is where the Incredible Hulk was always. The, the villain of the week, like the one where he had to beat up the abusive father. Right. Like Incredible Hulk nearly killing a guy because <laughs> he was beating up a kid. Yeah. Um, yeah. This. Yeah, we used to go town to town to solve the, the individual problem from that town yeah. and move on to the next one. Yeah. yeah. Like the littlest hobo. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> the, the most gigantic big green hobo. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, this, I could see where they were going. Like you mm. would get these 
perhaps Doctor Strange would get a new patient in, mm-hmm. and that would lead to some element of the mystic realm or something. Or they'd have he battles his life versus like the. I'm not going to getting spoilery. Just like towards the end, he goes back into that same meeting, mm-hmm. and he's a bit more, a little bit more confident, a bit yeah. more confident. And I was like, <laughs> this could be fun. Yeah. Um. But there was the porn stashes get me a lot. But it's the seventies. I get yes. it. Yeah. I get the thing. You have to put a filter on this. Peter wouldn't look cool he, with he, that tash, though. Yeah. He looked the part. He, yes, he actually really looks the part of Stephen Strange. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And one of the you do bring up one of the interesting changes, I suppose, to the original version of. Doctor Strange, he's a psychiatrist here. He's not yeah. a surgeon. Yeah, he's um, not a neurosurgeon. So this is quite interesting because I was reading, I think I mentioned on the last podcast, I've been reading some of the really early Doctor Stranges from his first appearance in Strange Tales. Um, and the first consultation he has as he is Doctor Strange, the Sorcerer Supreme, is with somebody that's had, um, that's had problems in their dreams. They're having, they're having these horrible dreams of another dimension. So it is kind of a psychiatrist uh, f- a focus, I suppose. He doesn't become a surgeon as, as the character until about four or five issues later. So um, so I like that they've taken that side of him, that he is kind of trying to solve people's mental issues uh, rather than uh, just doing some surgery on them. So I like that they've used, used that part of it in, uh, in this version of Doctor Strange. Yeah. yeah, and the one thing I think I did like finally, just when I'm kind of kind of giving a similarity between Grey's Anatomy with magic Uh that at the very end there was that very playful thing where you see this now more jovial Doctor Strange Mm -hmm. he performs a bit of camera trickery but it is like magic yeah Um, I I don't want like that that scene is brilliant it's hilarious it's a brilliant scene and I'm like that could be cool Uh these street tricks street magic tricks Doctor Strange is playing yeah and I'm like because you could just imagine, like, oh, the pen is gone out of someone's hand, or uh-huh. it turns into a snake, and really funny. Like, they'll have this jovial, humorous element mm-hmm. where, like, Spider-Man didn't have that, and The Incredible Hulk was always somber. Uh-huh. Da, 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 da. Oh, so good. Yeah. Always just walking backwards. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that's the best analogy I can give it. Mm-hmm. I love, I love, just to talk about that scene really quickly, sorry. I love that what he actually does. So the guy's supposed to be producing a bunch of flowers yeah. from a handkerchief. I love that he doesn't go overboard and produce something like a snake. He does a dove from a handkerchief, which is actually a well-known street magic <laughs> trick. Yeah. So all he does is replace a street magic trick with a street magic trick. The magician is like, what? Yeah, the only person that probably noticed that that is magic is the magician himself, because he knew that there's no dove underneath the, <laughs> underneath the handkerchief. Everybody else is like, oh, okay, I've seen that down the street. <laughs> but <laughs> it was the, it was the, he, to, to, to do it with his mystic fingers, uh-huh. he just rubs his <laughs> temples. Absolutely. And I'm like, but he rubs his temples by going, do you remember the, the, the mystic fingers in this in this in the nineteen seventies has got really bad comments. <laughs> 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 yes, and I've now got Paul Daniels being the Sorcerer Supreme um, with with Debbie McGee. I'm like, oh god, she'd be no. the clear. Yeah, she. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> on that note, John, do you want to give us on your that bombshell? First on that bombshell. Um, yeah, it, it's the reverse side of this. It's, you know, as, as we spoke in our 101 about the origin and, mm-hmm. and about the, the character of Stephen Strange, this actually is almost the, 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 the yin or the yang to what his actual origin and his character is at, at the start. Um, and it's kind of an interesting take, really. It's the reverse of Stephen Strange's origin tale. Instead of him seeking out the ancient one, the, the ancient one it is seeking out the person who he knows to be um the successor to him mm. um it, it kind of chimes with what um uh t swint says in, in the the trailer about you know i've been peering through time to find you it, it's kind of that element of, of the story that um is happening here with uh linma um and so it's kind of the 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 reverse as i say rather than him going to tibet Mohammed is is coming to the, the mountain. The mountain. <laughs> yeah, exactly. For those um, of you who haven't joined us for our discussions about the trailers for the new Doctor Strange film, T. Swint is Tilda, Tilda Swinton. Swinton. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, which, um, which you will continue to be called T. Swint. T. Swint. Well, it's easier to say. Yeah. It's also um, like it's not like Taylor Swift. Just, just letting yeah, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Taylor um, Swift is not in Doctor Strange. <laughs> <laughs> and I think also then the other interesting note is his character. He's not this arrogant neurosurgeon. And um, there's that whole scene where he's helping one of the alcoholics 
the Pleiades, and he really seems to have uh, a conscience. He's working in a public hospital. He's not a private consultant or, mm -hmm. or surgeon. And um, he defends the fact that he's allowed this lady who's got alcohol problems to stay in the hospital overnight to keep her off the juice, as they're affectionately calling it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and he's having to battle with um, his boss, Dr. Taylor, to try and say that this is OK. We should be doing that. So there's a real kind of public spirited conscious of, of Stephen Strange here uh, as a doctor, as mm -hmm. the character, which goes... Uh, the reverse is the reverse of what his origin in the comics is. And that's kind of an interesting take. It's, I, I don't have a problem with them, um, mixing it up with regards to origins and, and to, to characters. Yeah. Um, because it still works, actually. Um, and, and I like that it chimes with Linma's assertion that, you know, you, the person who is the Sorcerer Supreme needs to be someone who has humanity, um, in the forefront of their mind as they protect the earth and the planet. And, yeah. and whereas in the comics, he has to overcome his arrogance to, to think like that. He, uh, I suppose it's already there. So that it, it removes an element of the character development, I suppose. But, um, I kind of enjoyed this r reverse side of it. Um, yeah. you know, it, it's easier for the audience to connect. And I suppose if you're doing a pilot, Absolutely. you probably want someone who is immediately, um, kind of, uh, sympathetic or you can warm to rather than someone who's cold and heartless. Uh, maybe certainly back in the seventies. I think it'd be different now. Yeah. I, I think that was it. I think that's the, the reason I kind of liked it is because, yeah, the character was, uh, there's a line at the end. It was like, "What about love?" Yes. And he it was, goes, "Yes, because you love humanity, you will always find love that and was, be able to take it." Oh, and that was totally for the seventies audience. That was totally. Don't worry. There will be a love interest of the week. Yes, he's not, <laughs> he's not becoming a monk. Yeah. <laughs> you know. And I think that that was yeah. that was really good. Yeah, I, definitely. And, and as you say, he's not, he's not an arrogant uh, surgeon like in the comic books. He is definitely a womanizer, like in the comic books. He's definitely a man that gets what he wants. Um, I love, there's a great moment with Clea where, um, they are going home. She's, uh, she's saying to him, maybe we can go on a date kind of thing. Uh, she loses her memory. And then later on, when it comes back and they're doing the same street walk, he repeats her lines back to her so that he knows he's going to get the date out of her. He says, well, maybe I can help you with your homework. Um, you know, maybe we could go out for dinner. She said those exact same things to him early on in the episode. So I love that he's still the womanizer. So he's not arrogant but he's definitely a proper it was still, 70s man yeah he's still a womanizer <laughs> absolutely yeah, yeah. yeah really um cool. and yeah i mean the whole love thing as well would transfer to hipsters in the modern age That's, uh, yeah. really mm -hmm. well yeah totally. the universe is love yeah. peace man <laughs> <laughs> absolutely i'm a secret uh trippy psychedelic love and peace man from the 70s. of course of course <laughs> well that would explain your love for dr strange yes definitely. So Derek, what's your uh, first point? My first point of the villains uh, yeah. in this, I really, really love the opening of this episode. Right, you got to remember and just take this into account. I'm a huge fan of Doctor Who, right? So I'm talking from when I was a kid, this was the first show that I was watching every single week, right back to the days of Tom Baker, uh, into the days of Peter Davidson. I'm not talking about the newfangled great CGI. <laughs> so so opening up with a hand puppet um, with lights on its head um which is which is filmed so you can't really see the puppet very well, but you can kind of see the mouth move. So this is the nameless one, or Dormammu, as we're going to definitely be yeah. calling it throughout the episode. Is this or um, isn't it Dormammu? I, I love this setup. I love the fact that we see the Dark Dimension. Um, that was cool from the comic books, and it looks quite yeah. similar. It's, it, yeah. do, it does look like the M.C. Escher style of uh, style of artwork. Um, and we see Morgan Le Fay, who is a comic book villain, um, very very popular now, and actually has been used quite recently in the Secret Wars uh, arcs. Um, as as one of the major villains, which is quite cool to see an actual character from the Marvel Universe in uh, in this TV show. But I love that this is the overall concept. This would be this would be pretty shocking if you came from, as you mentioned, Chris, the uh, Incredible Hulk. Oh, I'll turn on to that new Marvel show. Um, and those episodes have been about the drunken uh, wife beater um, being taken down by the most powerful of Marvel's heroes. <laughs> <laughs> and then you come on to this show on, on a Saturday night and it's it's set in another dimension. Like, that must be so jarring for you. Um, but I think they set it up really well. And I think having a female protagonist as well is really unusual. That's, that, that would be something that you wouldn't see very often back in the 70s. And actually, even even now, most of the uh, protagonists or antagonists, excuse me, um, in these type of shows or these type of movies would be male and would be the powerful battle between 
two men against each other. I love that it's Morgan Le Fay. I love that she's our villain here. Uh, and she's going to use her feminine wiles all the way through the episode to try and, uh, try and take out, take out Doctor Strange and get him on her side, which I love. I think that's really good. Yeah. It's both her strength and her weakness. Exactly. Exactly. So I have two things on that. Mm-hmm. One, Dormammu or the nameless one looks like Beaker. <laughs> who has uh, been dipped in red paint. Yes, and through a filter. Don't yes, worry, and through a filter. Um, I was literally expecting one point going... Rah, rah, rah. Uh, it was still good, and it was I, I enjoyed it. But, okay, I didn't want... I don't know how much to be... Remember when we saw Thanos for the first time uh-huh. in, uh, in the Avengers? Uh, yes. 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 So, that looks like that dimension. It really now, does, it? I'm like going, it was all... Rocky, but okay, where we had a, a purple hue or blue hue. Now back then it was a red hue, uh-huh. and with I was like, smoke. with smoke, and yeah, I was yeah. like, now we know where they ripped that off. I know. <laughs> yeah. I was expecting the chair to twist around yeah. and have Thanos sitting there in the background yeah. going, "I'll just do it myself, then, to man." <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I definitely got that as well. I love the fact as well that the nameless one, um, I will leave you old and barren, uh, to Morgan Le Fay That's after funny. she's failed again, uh, because she f- basically had the hots for Stephen Strange because mm-hmm. he's so goddamn sexy. It's the um, stash. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, like she failed <laughs> to carry out her mission because she fell in love. Yes. Um, and we do see a little bit of, uh, you know, sexual healing going on in the dark dimension as well. Uh, absolutely. Well, it is the 70s. There is definitely going to be some I of that. I mean, it's excellent. Uh-huh. I loved it. And can I just say, the actress who plays um, Morgan Le Fay, did you guys recognise who no. it was? Yeah. Not at all. The mother from Arrested Development. It was, oh. f- f- I loved it when I found out that. Isn't Archer, that- Arrested Development. That's right. Oh, great. But I, I actually didn't know this. Back in Arrested Development, when they're doing, there's a, there was a throwback from Arrested Development to this film. Really? Yeah, because they were doing uh, some play about superheroes and right. stuff. And they made her, <laughs> they asked her to play the evil older woman. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> that was <laughs> brilliant. Ah. All right. Like, you see, people's careers weren't destroyed by this TV pilot. Well, yes, not everybody. <laughs> not <laughs> everybody. <laughs> Chris, do you want to take us on to your next point? So, I'm going to talk about the origin story, but a different element of it. Okay. Um, the car crash. Mm. Yes. So... I think, John, you said it was the whole chosen one. This is around this element of the, him being the chosen one. Mm-hmm. Um, that, as we kind of talked about in our 101, typically it's the car crash that what Doctor Strange was in, or Stephen Strange, that causes his injuries and stuff. Mm-hmm. In this reimagining, his parents got in the car and had the car accident to save him. That's right. Yep. So that he was, and his parents knew about him being the successor, or his father did, I think it was mm-hmm. said. Um, and I actually liked that. That was because you could see that being played out later on, potentially, exactly. in the yep. TV show where maybe some guilt happens, or um, he finds out more about why his family sacrificed themselves mm-hmm. to save him. And then there was the whole, I just, I don't know what it was about. I think it was, it, it's a very TV show. I like saying trope, but it's not. Um, it Welcome was, back, Chris. It, yeah, thanks. <laughs> I like my tropes. Um, but it is. You can see that this whole uh, self-sacrifice of a family member to save the chosen one being used in many, many things. Mm-hmm. And I think John's going to talk about that later. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing. Yeah. Um, but You may be guessing right. Oh, my God. You are a master <laughs> of the mystical arts. Uh, more the porn stash arts. Oh, yeah. Um, but no, I, I enjoyed that. I think it was there was an element to it where you would see that the kids would love this. Kind of going, oh, my God, I yeah. could be like Stephen Strange. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that was... I don't know what it was about. I just, I, it was something I went, yeah, that, that's, it was fun. It was a different way of taking it. Yeah, it's one of the things that you mentioned earlier on, John. It's how would this take up as a weekly series? And you can, you can understand that there, there may be now some investigation that Stephen would go through to find out more about the society that, um, that involves the Ancient One. Because remember, it's not the Ancient One that gives him the powers at the end. There is that, that beam of light with the talking voice that, <laughs> that gives him the powers. Yeah. Is that the voice of the Ancient One or no, is it something I think else? that would be the Vishanti. Right. But yeah. yeah. Oh, actually, hold on. Speaking of that, really interesting. The 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 symbol. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is that the actual symbol, or is that a, a take on it? Or it's pretty much the same. Yeah. Okay. It's the seal of the shanty. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, okay. Because yeah. I was looking at, it, I was going, 
kind of know, but it's slightly different. And it's it like, is. Hey. It, it's a slightly different form, but I think that's just probably a take on it. Okay. Yeah. But it's still, I think, the seal of his shanty. It is, yes. Because yeah. I thought the sun had like a voice for a second. Like, can really... like in Teletubbies? Like, <laughs> yeah, it was kind of like, <laughs> see, see Stephen running over grass. You know what? <laughs> the, the, the inspirations for this TV show run wide and deep. They <laughs> certainly do. I think that's, that leads you That is a nice them. segue into yeah. Um, my next point. Um, so, Harry Potter. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, is this a novel thing at all? <laughs> no, I, I say that um, jokingly. But um, we see a lot of things here. We see, you know, the, the parents protecting their child who has a destiny mm-hmm. um, here. We have the Mrs. McGonagall uh, cat trick where oh, yes. Morgan Le Fay transforms. And I think that's really neatly done in the study in... Um, in uh, the Sanctum Santorum yeah. really well. I do think if Wong had turned on the lights, it would have just been two bulbs moving up. <laughs> I would say so. But I do like it. Yeah, but it, it really it's well good. It's really well done. You see, the limitation of the time mm-hmm. really helps in that case, I think. Um, but we have the Miss, uh, Mrs. McGonagall transformation from uh, the cat into into the witch. Mm-hmm. Um, and we also have the beams of light. The, the, the Okay, they don't have wands, but that you've got the battle between Wong and Morgan Le Fay, mm-hmm. uh, Linma and Morgan Le Fay all have these beams of light coming in. So and the different colors, the yellow, different yellow colors, versus red. Yeah. yeah, yellow versus red, just like the big showdown between Voldemort and Harry Potter. He who should not be named. Yeah, the nameless <laughs> oh, one. The nameless, the nameless one. one. I mean, <laughs> oh my, God. my goodness, it's like. JK um, Rowling. You know, fantastic. I mean, I love Harry Potter, but mm-hmm. you're just there, kind of going, "Wow, all these different ideas are there already." Mm-hmm. I mean, even. And I have to say, you know, even uh, Morgan Le Fay, the character comes from uh, Arthurian legend yeah. as well in terms of an evil witch. So, mm. okay, you know, there's, there's all this... What do they say? There's only, f- like, six stories yeah. that you can possibly tell. So, All, all written by Shakespeare, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> or, or Plato or something mm-hmm. like that. So it's all kind of melds into this sort of cultural thread. So I kind of like that. But I was there going, this is like Harry Potter. Yeah. Lindmer is uh, Dumbledore. Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, uh, a really it interesting is. one. So Lindmer, um, do you know where he gets the name? Because he's not called Lindmer in the comic books. He is the ancient one in the comic yeah. books. So Lindmer is actually just Merlin. Separated oh them my God. the other way around. I thought oh that was really God. interesting because he's the head wizard. So, uh, did you get that one? No, I didn't know I do. I'm like, oh. Yeah. Because the D is silent That's as well. Right. Yeah. yeah. yeah so it is spelled Lindmer, but yeah. it's Limmer. Is the, the D is silent. Uh, yeah. Silent D. Uh-huh. I like it. Um, there are some other connections though in, in this. There are some other things that this, that this show takes from, obviously. I think we can be pretty clear. I think so. That it came out in 1978. Star Wars has to have influenced the the version of the Jedi uh, mind yeah. trick. Oh, absolutely. absolutely! This is this is my next point. Really, is that we do have Obi Wan <laughs> Kenobi in in this show. Uh, the Jedi mind trick is used six times, I think, by the ancient one. It is, this, it is so funny. Funny. this is not the sorcerer you're looking for. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, some great moments there with with how it's used. It's a great power to have if you don't have a huge amount of budget. It's a great power to just turn people's minds and they repeat uh, what you've said to them back to the next person they're talking to. Uh, a great, the, my favorite one definitely is the nurse in the hospital where Limmer goes up to her and says, um, it's an unusual situation. I have pertinent information about the girl. And then she goes off to the, to the <laughs> evil nurse, the, uh, in the psychiatry hospital and repeats it to her. And the, the evil nurse will call her, looks at the young nurse going, pertinent. <laughs> I don't think you've used uh, that word before in I your life. I just <laughs> laughed my head off at that. It was just like, it was such like, it was the bureaucratic Jedi mind trick. Mm-hmm. It was like, it's an unusual situation. I have pertinent information about the girl. <laughs> What? Why are you talking to me like that? <laughs> You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> For me, Linmer is an amazing Jedi artist. Mm-hmm. That that drawing was oh, amazing. Wow. <laughs> he should be working for the police. Yeah, doing it's, this. it's like, CSI. But, but it was also it wasn't just your standard mugshot. It was like tilted to the left with mm-hmm. her chin up and the hair flowing <laughs> like wind. <laughs> it was like, fab, wasn't it? <laughs> You're kind of thinking, is that one of the superpowers or one of the powers that you have when you become the Sorcerer Supreme? Do you get to be able to draw like a like a proper artist? <laughs> Again, and, back to the magic fingers uh-huh. <laughs> the, the other power that I really liked was the silent talking to one another between Morgan Le Fay oh, yes. and, and uh, the ancient one uh, on the bridge where it's like 
you will not pass or you you shall not cross this barrier into our realm and it's like the the lips aren't moving and it's just like the the intense stirs oh. and i just like i loved it i was like that is the best type of acting it was fantastic ever. absolutely fantastic and i'm going to quickly bring in one of my other points here because i absolutely loved morgan Le Fay's plan dormammu says you know i'm going to return you to earth after 300 years and you're going to take out the ancient one and her plan is to throw him off a bridge <laughs> <laughs> which is brilliant you know i've spent 300 years waiting to return when the barriers break i will go there and throw the old man over the bridge <laughs> but, but you've only got three days <laughs> yes and but he stopped me so i will transfer my power to somebody else to throw him over a bridge Brilliant. Absolutely love I it. I love this. I should have started the podcast with, we have three days to accomplish this podcast. <laughs> Only three days. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Absolutely. Um, um, yes, but that's there must be point. some kind of, I don't know, trippy, witchy reference to I'm, the I'm three ge- days. I'm guessing that it is. Trinity, something. the Holy Trinity. That no, I think it's more just no to do with the barriers between Earth and the other realm are, own, are only weakened for this period of time, for a, for a small period of time. Um, I think it might be just while the Ancient One gets Stephen Strange on board so they can bolster the power but between if, the but two But if we realms. didn't know about it, then the Ancient One also repeats that it's three days. Three days. Yes. <laughs> and she will do this. Absolutely. It's in the book that he has. So, you know, it's obviously They a, actually a rule. use the lighting, lightning as well from, uh, okay, what lightning was it in New Hope? It wasn't, so maybe, yeah. maybe Star oh Wars. Oh my god. <laughs> George Lucas watched this and then he stole back and was yeah. like, you take me, mine, I take yours. Um, I'm going to bring it into Return of the Jedi. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, Chris, do you want to give us your next point? Um, Prog rock. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, the, the music, uh, we've talked about music waterboarding. Uh, okay, so. At the start, the music of this uh, TV pilot, TV movie, is uh, unique, intense, uh, Mm -hmm. a sonic uh, death wish, if you will. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But my God, it grew on me. I was tapping my foot as that thing when it was like, wah, wah, wah. I was like, na, 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 na. Do, you know, do you know what? I actually like the Doctor Strange theme tune. They use it multiple times and in various different versions. <laughs> Some of them I really, really didn't like. But there's actual theme tune I really liked. I wish they kind of pulled it out a little bit more. Um, yeah, the first 10 minutes of this uh, of this episode are almost unbearable. Yeah. Um, it, the screeching through through the ears that uh, of Paul Chahara's score um, is is difficult to 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 kind of focus on the actual episode. Yeah, I think I needed a psychiatrist after um, <laughs> after the first ten minutes. It just was so discordant, so intense, just like. <laughs> but yeah, it, it got better. Though. It got better, and yeah. the second time I watched it, I, I didn't mind. It, it was, it was, it was fine. And actually, there was part of it uh, right at the start. It really reminded me of um, the Hannibal TV series music. That type of music, really oh, kind of discordant, yeah. um, really kind of offbeat, uh, all that um, type of, of music being used. And I, and that's when I went, okay, it's not just like. It's still being used, you know. You, you've still got that kind of going on in TV today, and and so it, it grew on me in, uh, with regards to that. And even I think um, the the uh, the sex scene, kind of, I suppose, between uh, <laughs> Le Fay and, and Strange in the Dark Dimension, whatever the, the, that the, means. The, um, basically, the standard porn waka waka, yeah, but it, with a guitar and synth. But then it went <laughs> it went strings and yeah. it went really intense. And all I could have think of was Wagner. I, I thought it was like Tristan and Isolde's love death um, and Wagner. It, it, that same intensity as, you know, the Dark Dimension was doing its thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Did you notice that the music for Earth versus the music for the mystical realm or whatever they called it? Mm-hmm. They didn't call it, actually. Anything, the they? Dark Dimension. Dark Dimension, sorry. Yeah. But um, they, 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 there was two different types. Mm. So that was like, even so when Strange was in the apartment with Clea, that was the more... Rock prog, yeah, kind of like, wah, cha, wah, but, there's wah, even, cha, wah. but there's even a great moment when when uh, Clea is watching um, Abbott and Costello, isn't it? Meet the meet the monsters. She's watching it on TV, and the music of it is so intense. And I thought it was the background music, and then she turns off the television. <laughs> it's so intense, really intense. And I don't know why. I don't know whether it's just our copy of it. Um, we bought it on DVD, uh, so we could watch it for this, and then we watched it also on the YouTube version because actually the quality, sadly, on the YouTube version is better than the DVD yeah. I bought. But, 
I don't know whether it was just the mix of the music is so bad because it's been copied so many times, but it's so yeah, maybe. intense. Or maybe, maybe we're just not used to that. And there's uh, Morgan nowadays, and there's Morgan Lefay's signature tune as she appears and disappears at will. It's like, mm. woo, 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 <laughs> like as, as it goes. And I, I did, I suddenly thought of um, the the uh, Shaun of the Dead theme. Where, woo, oh, woo, 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 <laughs> I just it just immediately went into that for it's me. The blue rat by yeah, um, yeah. by, by monster as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got that very that very cool style. I think, but very difficult the first time we watched it. But I think I, I definitely grew uh, definitely grew on me, and I was definitely singing the theme tune afterwards. Oh, well. like this is for like a Suicide Squad. Back in the day, this would have been like Suicide Squad level of soundtrack. <laughs> it would have been. It was like every was scene like, is punctuated by yeah, music. It was yeah. like da da da. Because I, I, if I was back in them, I'd buy the vinyl. Nice. It was like going, yeah, because you could just, you could, depending on where your mood was, you can start it off with a bit of mysticism, mm-hmm. like with the strings. Or if you just want to, if you want to end your party, you put on that opening <laughs> title. <laughs> I think we, I'm so delighted for our listeners to be able to get our versions of every single one of those tunes just by our own mouths. Yeah, We're not using any instruments here. Um, <laughs> I think we've talked enough about the music. Yes, okay. uh, John, do you want to crack on with your next point? Yeah, um, it's two fundamental beats that I thought absolutely nailed um, Doctor Strange. Actually, mm. um, the first one was uh, with with Wong and his relationship with um, Linma, uh, the ancient one. Absolutely, um, I loved the reference to Wong here, and I think it really chimes with with what they're trying to do in the film. That you know he's not a servant and. You have Linma say, Wong, you're a pupil and a friend, not a servant. Sit down and have breakfast. Stop cooking me food. Uh-huh. Um, cause actually you're not a great cook. And I, I kind of liked, I liked the fact that you had, uh, Linma really trying to say, look, you know, this has been the case in the comics where you've been a servant, but within this TV show, mm-hmm. you are a student of mine. And also a friend, and, and we're equals. And I, I think that really chimes with what they're trying to do in the movie, and what mm-hmm. Benedict Wong actually mentioned um, at San Diego Comic Con. So, I, like, like, it was interesting to see that immediately um, in the TV series mm-hmm. from 1978, and what they're trying to do now in 2016. So, I thought that was a really kind of strong uh, kind of beat with uh, the the. the the relationship between, um, as well, Strange and Wong, you know, that he, he is an equal. He is a master in his own right. Absolutely. And you see him as well fending off and protecting the ancient one from, uh, Le Fay as well. Yeah. Uh, when she's infiltrated into the sanctum. And so, you know, what Benedict Wong said is that, um, you know, he took on the role and he kind of discussed with Kevin Feige that, you know, um, he was more of a, a marshalling of, of students in, in the Ancient One's temple, mm-hmm. that he was less um, a servant and also a master of the mystical arts. Exactly. He was the drill sergeant, I think. he, he That was the term he used at yeah. San Diego. And I, and I think we see this here as well, that yeah. he is one of um, the users and, and masters of the mystical arts. He's not simply um, a, a butler uh, in, in service of the the um the ancient one mm-hmm. or indeed Stephen Strange and I even kind of do like the the connection where you know Stephen Strange is adamant no I'm not going to take on this role of sorcerer supreme if I have to be um a servant or yes. subservient to you and you're my master like he really questions that and I think that's a really good little touch mm-hmm. um, and I think as I say I think it chimes uh, with beats that are happening, I think for for this movie. Yeah, yeah and one uh, of my points was also about Wong's relationship with the ancient one. I did, I do really, really like it. Uh, I also like the fact that Wong gets a moment at the end. He does have the battle with Morgan Le Fay. I think that's really good to see yeah. that this character would form a, a central part of the TV series if it, if it was to come up. And he isn't just going to be like the Cato. He isn't going to be the person that just walks in with the tea or cooks dinner because he's a terrible cook. He could kick ass yeah, like Cato. Absolutely, yeah, really cool. I also like the fact that he's the one that tells Stephen how powerful he is now. He's the one at the end of the episode that says to him, um, you are like a child with a loaded weapon. Yeah. You're either, you either cool. can kill yourself or other people if not trained, which I think is really, really cool. No, absolutely. That was a really nice touch uh, as well. And I think like my, then my second uh, aspect, which I thought was really fundamental to the character of Stephen Strange, which I think they absolutely nailed, it is where Linma is discussing with Stephen Strange, you know, that he's been imbued with a clear mind and a love of humanity. Um 
And he's talking about the different uh, mystical arts, you know, sorcery, magic, alchemy, and he says, or science. And um, he, he poses the question, would you prefer understanding to ignorance if I were to open up a new way of thinking, i.e. to this mystical arts? Um, you know, and he is spot on in, when he re- replies to the Ancient One, uh, and, and Stephen Strange says... Um, I would prefer understanding. It's that idea of knowledge and training. And again, it it, it links into uh, the teaser trailer. It's that fundamental part of the character that, you know, yes, he has all this great power, but it's not from um, radiation. It's not from um, an experiment, an accident or or technology. You have to learn. It's it's a studious process that he has. And if he doesn't study the different um, spells, incantations, uh, and how to perform them, they're of no use to him. And in fact, can be dangerous, as as Wong is saying. This idea that you have to learn and to become this. You mm-hmm. can't just simply be one day you're a, you're Peter Parker without powers, the next day you're suddenly strong. I mean, he has to like learn how to sling his webs and yeah. run up the side of buildings. Absolutely. But like, you know, and that's what I really like about um, this character, and and in the same with Peter Parker as well. You know, there's that learning moment within the origin story of, of these two, and I think this really comes across. And I think it's an absolute fundamental beat which they mm-hmm. nail. Yeah, um, absolutely, really no. do. Yeah, really, really cool. I uh, really, really like the the choices here for those for those parts of the character that I do think are universal. That the things that you can identify with. Um, yeah, love love that love that idea. So, Derek, what's your next point? Well, one of my points was about the relationship between Wong and uh, and the uh, the ancient one. I do think their relationship is probably the best written on screen. The two the two actors seem to have some good little interplay yeah. with each other. Uh, there's a weird moment with the ancient one at the start where he's explaining Morgan Le Fay, and Wong goes, "You've never showed me that book," and he said, "You've never looked," <laughs> which, I th- which I thought was a bit harsh, but uh, but I do like their moments together. They're really good. Uh, so I, so I'm just going to pull out a really quick one, uh, just a comment. The, the um, Sanctum Sanctorum is fantastically designed. The yes. set design for that location, which probably would have formed probably the major location for the show, much like the bridge on the Starship, Starship Enterprise yeah. or uh, something like that. It, it is fantastic. There's so many little nooks and crannies and so many uh, great things on in there. You can tell they spent pretty much all the money f- uh, for the episode on the Sanctum and on... Um, and on the Dark Dimension, those are the yeah. two big, uh, the big costs, I suppose, uh, which is just kind of leads me into one other comment. There's varying stories about this, but one of the reasons why I didn't get picked up to series was that this show, this, this, remember, this is the seventies. It went between fifty thousand dollars and a hundred thousand dollars over budget on this pilot. Wow. Um, huge amount of money spent for that time again. That's that's you know a drop in the ocean for a movie now, but that's uh, that's a significant that's amount of huge. to go over budget. Yeah. So it's one of the reasons why it didn't carry on to series. Uh, how would you continue and a show for twelve or thirteen episodes, which was around what they were doing at the time, or twenty five episodes as some shows were going? How would you continue it if your budget was that far over for just the pilot? Well, you would think like if the sets were built, then the sets were built. Mm-hmm. You could use them going forward. My thought would reason was the the special effects. Mm-hmm. That's what, so I've heard similar story. Yeah. That it was, I knew the over budget part, but I th- assumed it was due with the special effects, the lightning, the, the, the rays from the hand, uh-huh. that type of thing. That's what I assumed why, like, that, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Okay. Yeah. Damn. That, and just the, I, I, again, there's no detail as to where the extra spend came from, but I do think the amount of money they spent on that set alone is, uh, like, it's well worth it. It looks like it's hand built. Uh, some of the walls don't look like they actually would exist in the real world. They were kind of thrown <laughs> up uh, with a bit of plaster on the walls, but the actual set itself, there's so much detail in there and so much stuff for Doctor Strange to investigate in future episodes. What does this mean? Why is there a globe like this? Why yeah, is, that's the one why, I was yeah. like, the globe. Yeah. It was like, that's weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, also, what was the glowing platform that comes, he was holding his hands over that comes out mm. of the ground? Yeah, the white cube. The white cube. I was like, the Tesseract? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I, I, I don't know actually, but I mean, I suppose it was, yeah, the, 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 the sign of light, wasn't it? The, the, the yeah. um, coming and being projected onto the floor. So I yeah. presume it's, you know, he's made the choice. He's now getting imbued with, uh, that power yeah. from yeah. the Vishanti. Absolutely. Chris, do you want to take us on to your final point? Sure. Um, so I want to talk about Dr. Handsome. 
<laughs> the, the theme of the the subplot mm-hmm. of this uh, amazing show. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, For the time. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was very like that was quite unique thing. So for you not no people not sure where I'm going with this. Um, so straight away we know that Doctor Handsome, I mean sorry, Doctor Strange was <laughs> um, uh, had a one night stand and then went. Sorry, no, he was on a date with someone at the very beginning mm-hmm. and then went up and slept with someone else. Yeah, so he's irresistible. Uh, then <laughs> he's Clea, a dog. Yeah, then Clea falls in love with him, mm-hmm. and then the whole reason, the whole <laughs> basically saving premise, not the magic mm-hmm. of how he survived, was that Morgan Le Fay basically fell in love with him. Yeah. Within what? Like less than, we know it was less than three days. Yes, exactly. (laughs) So his superpower is not magic. It's sexy. It is sexiness. He is Mr. He is McDreamy of this time. (laughs) Literally McDreamy because he goes into dreams as well. There you go. (laughs) And his sexy aura protected LeFay across the the incantations that would prevent her from getting into the sanctum. Now, I will say, and I know she's the villain, I will say in Morgan LeFay's defense, 300 years without a man other than the ancient one, or sorry, (laughs) the nameless one, excuse me, uh, other than him, she hasn't seen a man in 300 years. True. So she does say, I have womanly needs. It's been a while. Lads, I think and you're that was her, slightly so. cringy, actually. Yeah. I mean, from a from a modern perspective mm-hmm. or a current perspective, um, that little interaction between the nameless one uh, and Morgan Le Fay um, was slightly cringy. Oh, yeah. In in that, um, you know. It was all about beauty and age. I mean, there's not nothing new with regards to like witches. I mean, thinking back to um, Michelle Pfeiffer in Stardust. Yes, you know that's the whole thing that they're they're trying to retain youth and beauty, and mm-hmm. and uh, you know that's there. But it's just the way it came out. I think between in the conversation, it was like, oh, okay, you just wouldn't do it like that today. It would Absolutely. be done in a different way or a different choice of language maybe well, but it was certainly was, the, there was a moment where I did cringe it was uh, certainly the threat of um, you will be old and barren yeah. <laughs> just the way he says it it's like okay chill out okay old is, old is enough <laughs> barren <laughs> sounded harsh he also says what need of you for strange when you have your love of me yeah. I'm like well um, you're a big fiery puppet I'm like <laughs> like <"Yeah."> Mika <laughs> I'm like okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, I can see why she likes strange, actually, yeah. And he also says, um, I have a lust, a lust for human souls, <laughs> which I thought was quite cool. <laughs> uh, but yes, it very, very cringy and, um, yeah, di- difficult that, uh, for that scene to play in, in, in nowadays, I suppose. Um, but yes, I, I can totally get it. He, he is Dr. Uh, Dr. Stephen McDreamy, um, <laughs> Sorcerer Supremey, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> <My> Chicken Supremey. <laughs> I know, I just thought it was so funny, just as a way, like, that, like, because you could see, right, so, if this was to be picked up, Mm -hmm. they would have a a Monster of the Week, or a Monster of a Couple of Weeks, brought by Morgan Fay, like, the horse, the horse knight, Uh and then a Lover's Dress of the Week, with Clea always in the background. Yeah. And, like, that's how it would, I was like, Especially because they set up the fact that even though he went on a date with that nurse that he's speaking to at the start, and sleeps with somebody else, she doesn't seem to really care. She seems to kind of say, well, I'll see you yeah. tomorrow. Well, he gives her a little peck on the cheek. And, oh, you know, you. Which, <laughs> oh, you. Which, I presume that would be a sexual harassment <laughs> case in work. So that was the next episode? Yeah, exactly. Really sexual harassment? And yeah. then, you know, obviously Matt Murdock, uh, after The Incredible Hulk, would have put, been in court for him, mm-hmm. trying him. But Absolutely. there was this whole kind of sexiness and sexual undertone to the whole show. I mean, even just with the Le Fay method yeah. at the end, where <laughs> she's back yeah. and you're like going... Um, Okay, well, oh, it's a psychic thing. Yes. Not, it's how you, you know, find your inner power. It did sound but a little, little bit like the rhythm method. Yeah. It did, <laughs> yeah. Too much. But how, they never explained how she got back and got her youth back. I was like, oh, that, uh, that's for a future. Yeah, episode. I know. Yeah. But yeah, it was quite an interesting take with Dr. McHanson. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It's the way you set up a show in the 70s, yeah. really, isn't it? So, John, do you want to boil your last seven pages of notes <laughs> down to a final point? Yes. It's, it's the visuals. It's, um, you know, I think this really comes alive um, in sort of the second sort of two thirds or, or half of of this TV pilot, and I think the visuals really uh, come into their own. I mean, I love the the hot hand thing that he does to to sort out his aches and pains on his hips. Um, that was cool. Yeah, d- I, we all want that. I mean, to be honest, you know, 
an hour in the gym, phoning it in at the gym. Uh, you, you just want to like crease out those aches and pains <laughs> the next day with a wow. with a hot hand, deep Absolutely. heat. Um, like, I but, wonder if that's where they got the idea for deep heat. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but, I, but I think the visuals, like they were trippy, they were psychedelic, they were really, they, they felt kind of honest and true to um, the, the the trippiness and the psychedelia that that Ditko brought to the artwork and and. For, for which the, the comics are, are also so well known, mm-hmm. this, this visual style that he brought. Um, like, I thought where he goes onto the astral plane for the first time and he's falling through the, the, the crazy colors. I just love that. And it was just fantastic. The music and it's, it, you know, the music came really together with the visuals here and the swirls and all this kind of thing. And you immediately think psychedelic drugs. Like it, it is really, really cool. And I mean, Clear's, um, face, I think, in the dark dimension was really kind of fab. It, it actually looked really modern, I thought, the mm. way it was done. It didn't look like it came from the seventies. It's probably one part of the, the movie that didn't feel, um, dated actually. Mm-hmm. It, it looked really quite solid in terms of what it did. And then, um, just the, the dead, um, or yeah, the, the dead looking Linma. Um, oh, yes. in the dark dimension yeah. as, uh, uh, Stephen and Lefay are kind of getting jiggy. Uh, he's kind of there with the burnt out eyes, a bit like, uh, Cassilius to an extent and um, obviously done differently, but he's there kind of strung up in a dead tree. Um, and oh, he's, really he's cool, got the yeah. dark eyes. Uh, John Mills, like the, the makeup on it looked really cool, mm-hmm. really excellent. Um, probably a little bit of him died inside knowing what was going on down uh, <laughs> below. Um, Please close my eyes. And then they link it in, you know, to show just that it is some kind of, there is an illusion there where he's kind of in that position in the sanctum. Mm. Um, and, you know, Lefay is using her power to try and, you know, poach Stephen Strange, um, to the dark side, I yeah. suppose. But I, I thought the visuals here were really good. They felt just, they felt cool. Um, mm-hmm. even though they were from the seventies, they felt right. They felt cool. Uh, and I, I think that's a big, big plus for this. Yeah. Um, like, you know, if you watch it, you sit back and you just kind of enjoy that visual trippy style, I think, mm-hmm. and go with it. The yeah. bit I did love is they stole when he's going to the astral page directly from the TARDIS in Doctor Who. Well, that is true. Yeah, <laughs> the spinning awesome. TARDIS was the spinning Doctor from Strange. That's right. I yeah, was like, yeah. ah. And then the flying, when it was like slightly transparent flying. like <laughs> the, Which reminds me of the scene in Superman, the first original with oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Christopher, Christopher Reeve. Reeve. It was like, da, da, he's holding her hand yes, flying. Yes, absolutely. Oh, God. Um, let's not talk about yeah. that, uh, that scene. Cause it's, but, uh, yeah. The, the, yeah, the visuals for me were amazing. Like, mm. I have to admit, like, the, the life war a bit where they, the, I think she shoots fire at, uh, Wong. Mm-hmm. And then the, there was that yellow hue around him. And then the fire was actually in a circle around him. Yeah. So they set a practical fire, or I assume it looks like, yeah. Oh, yeah. And literally in a circle, like, I was like, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, it was really, really cool. They're definitely, definitely one of the big strengths of the, of the, of the episode. Without a doubt. Derek, what's your final point? I think my final point has to be something that we haven't really talked about much. It is the um, the person that's being saved in this episode, and probably this would be the, the central part of every episode. Clear um, Lake. Yeah, Clear. Um, I like her storyline in this episode. The reason why is because I'm a huge fan of Nightmare on Elm Street, and I love that that's her storyline, effectively, is yeah. that she's being attacked in her dreams by something she can't control. So she doesn't want to go to sleep. How terrifying is it that she goes, she gets taken to, um, to hospital by the taxi driver, weirdly, yeah. <laughs> right outside her apartment. But um, rather than bringing her back up and putting her in her own bed, he takes her off to the hospital. But how terrifying is it that she's telling the doctors, um, do not give me any drugs. Don't put me to sleep because when I get into my sleep, I will be attacked by this woman. Um, and then she gets fed drugs. Yeah. Uh, firstly, by the nurse yeah. who ignores any kind of direction from the doctors and is trying to feed her drugs. Then by the person that's supposed to be responsible for the psychiatrist area in the hospital, he feeds her drugs, telling her it's going to be something that will keep her awake. And it's a and, tranquilizer. And it's a tranquilizer, which knocks her out. And then she gets attacked and goes into a coma. Uh, I really like this. I love that this that there is that central storyline for her as well as... Um, as Doctor Strange, that Clea is given a lot to do here, and Clea is from the comic books. Is that she is the big love interest in the in the whole yeah. uh, length of, of the daughter Strange. of Dormammu. 
There you go. Interesting. Oh, maybe yeah. not on the TV Lasers, show. Yeah. Cool. yeah, maybe not in the show, in the TV show. Um, no, but uh, but yes, I do like the fact that she is hugely important. The Ancient One says uh, when she's been used by Morgan Le Fay that uh, she is important to us. Make sure you find her um, and take care of her and save her. So I like I like I like that storyline. I like uh, that idea. I doubt that she would be used every single episode as the driving force behind uh, what's happening with Stephen. But I do like this creation of that character and the fact that she could be in the background uh, becoming. A doctor and working with Stephen. So from a, a procedural type show what this was going to be, you mm-hmm. would assume I don't know if they were going to keep her as a, a supporting character or would she be one that kind of drops in and out like the um, Betty, ba- Betty Ross right. in the Incredible Hulk where she was in every like six episodes yeah. or something. Yeah. But she was the love interest but she was always trying to find him so you'd only see her for a split second. Mm-hmm. Um, but then he would have other love interests. Yeah. Um, I do agree with the Nightmare on Elm Street that that's what I thought. Yeah, that because was cool. Yeah. What I assumed was going to be was like the, the astral plane was more like a dream plane. Mm-hmm. And then you would always have this Nightmare on Elm Street type piece. Like I was waiting for one part when she was in bed yeah. for the two hands to come out of the teeth like a Johnny Depp. Right. Go, oh, damn. <laughs> Pull her in. Yeah. That might have been a bit too much in that early. But, uh, but yes, I, I like that. And again, predates Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. But it, you know, the whole, the whole concept of it is brought in. You do have the ancient one saying that, as you said, the dream dimension is a lower level of the astral planes. It's the easiest way that most people can access it. It's only when you get to the higher levels that that's where the evil is and that's where the, the villains are effectively. But she seems to have trans- yeah. translated up a higher level because of having her contact. She took the high road. She did. <laughs> Not the <laughs> low road. But yes, I just, just wanted, to, wanted to call it out that I did really enjoy also that part of the episode. So that's overall our top five points about the episode. I think a couple of notes uh, before we go on. Not huge amounts now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think we've talked a lot about, about the uh, particular episode. But uh, John, do you want to give us a first note? My first note, and it's something I absolutely kind of nerded and geeked out to, and I wish... I could get them were I went American Psycho for a moment. It was the business card um, <laughs> that he gives to Doctor Strange oh, yes. that with the embossed with the seal of Vishanti. I was like, oh my god, I want one of those. <laughs> I was just like, like how sad am I? And I was like, this is American Psycho. I'm like, right. I'm judging business cards. I'm like going, <laughs> like the ancient one has the coolest business cards ever. Absolutely. Does it come in eggshell? Do you think? I don't know. <laughs> it was embossed. It was it was textured. It was like proper nice. <laughs> and I think they were very very, very impressed with it. They do turn it to the camera a few times just so you can make sure you can see the embossed. <laughs> oh sometimes. yeah, it was it was cool. cool. I was like, oh, um, cool. really good. Um, I thought it was funny. It was I think it was something actually that you pointed out. And we we looked back at it. It was when um, Stephen Strange was um, saving the kid on the bike from the bus. Uh, the bus had kind of been sent on a different course by Le Fay. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there was a, a children's clothes shop which had um, chubbies, huskies, and slims, um, which all I can say is, you know, the, the 70s version of, of how, to descri- how, how to describe children and, and what clothes that they, they, uh, they require um, was... Can you, imagine a mother, ah. can you imagine a mother bringing her six-year-old child going, uh, it was no, really you can only funny. shop in the husky section, my dear. What's a husky? <laughs> a husky is, is a more well-built... So it's a uh, jock, probably. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, so chubby you... is fat. fat. Husky is well built, like and muscly, slim is yeah. slim as slim as a, a skinny child. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But all three offensive though. <laughs> yeah. Which, which are like, it's not even you know, uh, it's not even you know regular, medium, and large. It's every single one of them is offensive. Which I, which I really <laughs> it was just like, um, could you imagine if like Marks and Spencers had that for their back to school range? Um, all sizes catered for chubbies, huskies, and slims. Like <laughs> oh anyway. Do that. Uh, really really funny Um, and then the other thing which I I forgot to mention was um, yeah the stuffed owl on um, Mm. Stephen Strange's desk in in the hospital again linking back to Harry Potter (laughs) uh, poor Hedwig had been uh, stuffed for this yeah (laughs) oh dear Uh, one of the notes for me is just uh, one of the other reasons that this show didn't end off being a success um, so again, these are, <laughs> these are pilots. So what happened, what used to happen in the back here wasn't just executive, executives in a studio that decide where their show goes ahead. They air the pilot, see what the reaction is, uh, from the audience, and then, uh, hopefully green light episodes for it uh, a couple of months later. Um, what happened, unfortunately, in Doctor Strange's case was it was up against 
I think it is still the most well-renowned miniseries of all time, Roots. Uh, the story oh, of Kuta Kinte's arrival in uh, in the United States of America. Hugely popular uh, miniseries. And I was up against, I think, the second episode of that. Right, um, okay. So it was, it was aired once. Terrible ratings because it was up against something that everybody in America was talking about and everybody in America was watching. So, uh, so pretty likely that that had an effect on the audience, uh, that were, that were watching another show, obviously. So, uh, just a note. Yeah. I've got actually two more, um, that I, I remembered. <laughs> no, I mean, the more, the more fun ones. Listeners, I mean, we expected this. Yeah. Yes, we knew it was Doctor Strange. It's a summer of strange and John talking. But it's strange. not really about, it's more fun <laughs> stuff from, from, uh, from the series, but. Mm. We have him as the milk tray man as well. Yes. Which for, for those of you who don't know, there is Cadbury's milk tray, which is a box of chocolates. The advert is a guy uh, wearing all black, but with a black polo neck. So he he turns up at um, Clear's uh, house in his all black polo neck, mm-hmm. but he has this really dodgy line that he delivers to it. It's very Bond esque. I think uh, you know, Double O Seven has got a lot to answer for. But it's been raining outside, and he goes. Well, I fancy a hot bath, you know, as he's kind of wink, wink, nudge, nudge at Clear. Uh, and she goes, all you're getting is a cold beer, you know, <laughs> wow, or a wow, bucket wow. of iced water over I mean, you. Just calm down, strange. Absolutely. You know? I really like that. Again, really the strength fun. of Clear. Yeah. Really, really good. Yeah, good moments. Um, and then it was the stuntman fall as well of the Ancient One <laughs> off the bridge where m- mysteriously the Ancient One suddenly became youthful. Um, and <laughs> With a great wig. With a great wig. Absolutely. Um, you have to love the transition um, and yeah. really good because they show it again as well it's, it happens and then all the dream flashbacks where that psychic bond begins to develop between strange and clear and so you see it again you mm-hmm. see it again and again and it's like I wonder who the stuntman is there. <laughs> That's <so laughs> really, good. really good. Uh, one final note for me, because I didn't really mention it throughout the episode, and it is kind of still an open question for me. I don't understand the, what the choice here. Um, so while he's in the Dark Dimension, Morgan Le Fay gives him the costume. So he's got the, uh, the coolest Doctor Strange costume that I think they could have afforded at the time. Yeah. He's got the collars up. He's got the He's got the medallion, I guess, which is supposedly the Eye of Agamotto or might have been the Eye of Agamotto yeah, yeah. Uh, he's got the belt buckle which is shaped like the seal of Ashanti uh, really cool yeah. costume he comes back he talks to the Ancient One and says well these were given to me by Morgan he says that's fine they'll do and then the costume transforms <laughs> into a tunic with the Captain Marvel logo on yeah. the front of it why did they do that? <laughs> I don't know. Cheaper? I really don't Was know. Was the costume just rented from the doctor? <laughs> I think so. And the thing is, you can buy that tunic um, for about $2,000. That's right, on yeah, eBay. On eBay. That's right. The original. I oh kind of like the colour and the cape. Um, maybe you could buy that. Uh, maybe we could look, we could look <laughs> yeah. he, he suddenly went from, like, cool wizard to kind of sackman wizard I with that. It, it kind of looked like it was made out of hemp. I still, I still wonder, like, I, I understand, obviously, I know the 70s had some garish, um, costumes or garish clothes for a lot of people. So I, I can understand maybe he wouldn't be able to walk down the street with those collars and with the, uh, with the cape. Uh, he probably, they probably needed to kind of even tone it down for the 70s into a purple tunic. <laughs> 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 with a giant star on it. Yeah, but I don't course. understand the choice that he didn't at least keep the cape and keep the costume and put it in a wardrobe and take something else out. This was transformed by the power of the Vishanti into a, purple tunic <laughs> and I don't get the choice but no answers from from no. I answer. so I was going to take the note about the costume but okay. uh, the one final one is just going back to the bridge so an old man falls off a bridge mm-hmm. nearly hits a taxi then gets up and walks away and everyone's like are you sure okay you grand bye <laughs> <laughs> I was like, the cabbie even goes are you okay man no wait we'll get a call an ambulance no ambulance this old man shuffling uh-huh. like limp on a leg you're going that was really interesting yeah. they, do, they do mention that he came out of nowhere is what the taxi driver says and nobody seems to have seen him fall from the bridge no but, but yes an old man and you know it's it's even though he doesn't look that old John Mills was probably in his early 60s yeah, maybe late 50s. he so. doesn't look that old they do play him as an ancient 80 year old almost and uh, nobody seems to care it's like uh, he goes um, where's that woman gone and everybody's like did you see a woman I didn't see a woman and I just let him fall <laughs> yeah. off uh, exactly I was, uh, except when like the girl who runs into the middle of the street uh-huh. taxi again swerves to avoid her goes oh no no I'm taking you to the hospital in my cap yeah. and you're like oh, what the yeah oh. that was really weird yeah just the difference that 
a taxi driver crashes into a trash can, mm -hmm. nowhere near her, and then gets out and says, what are you doing wandering right outside your apartment for? <laughs> yeah. You look dazed and confused. I'm going to take you to hospital. Yeah. Yet an old man is allowed to walk away hobbling. Yeah. With everyone saying, ah, he's fine. Yeah, he's you flew. Really strange. Is, where did he come from? He, it's like he came from nowhere. Yet you're just about to go over a bridge. Yeah, yeah. no, no. Uh, no. Didn't fall off the bridge. Yeah. He flew and came from the sky. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like some... I think that's one of the things about this this TV show is that it has some amazing concepts being introduced into a TV series like the dream world, such as the Nightmare on Elm Street stuff, mm -hmm. uh, like the different realms and, and all that explanation about different realities and, and parallel worlds and, you know, evil forces and all this kind of stuff introduced really well. And believable as well. Yeah. But then just maybe some standard TV script writing that would happen just, just actually even undermines that. So it's really, really odd. Yeah, it was just some leaps of logic that could have been fixed with like a line of dialogue. Yeah. Like, remember when Cleo walks out into the street and almost gets knocked down by the taxi, she's just had a dream where she's connected with Stephen Strange. Yeah, so she's had a vision. If you just even write in a line going, I need to meet Dr. Stephen Strange, he's at the local yeah. hospital... Then the taxi driver would take her there and it would all make sense. But yeah, for him to basically kidnap her, throw her in the back of her cab <laughs> and drop her off at a hospital and go, she's mental. And, you know, he doesn't even know that she doesn't know her name or where she's, no. where she yeah. lives. We don't really find that out. That, that comes a bit later. But yeah, you got interesting that. TV 70s. Do love it. Um, so I think it's time, guys. Oh no. <laughs> Chris, can you defend Doctor Strange, the TV movie, or will it be banished to the dark dimension? Oh, I'm on the fence. Mm. I'm so on the fence. It is so camp. Uh -huh. It's so 70s. Mm -hmm. It's slightly drug-induced, crazy ear waterboarding. <laughs> but there's an element to it which is just like, yeah, this is kind of cool. Right. I would have watched about 10 episodes of this straight. <laughs> this would be my binge. I'd be like, I know it's so bad. It's like your dirty secret. Yeah. It it's is. Like, it absolutely. literally is like a dirty secret. Like on... Yeah, I kind of like it. Um, <laughs> I defend. Yay. Excellent. I'm sorry. I know people are going to like go out crazy in the comments. So to put this in perspective, this is better than the eighth episode of Jessica Jones that everybody loves, Chris. That's what we're saying. <laughs> <laughs> the one you didn't defend. Yeah. Right. Okay. It's better than the new Fantastic Four movie. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 I yes. think we can all agree with no, that. Okay, we can agree with that one. Uh, yeah, no, it's better than Suicide Squad. Ooh. <laughs> no, um, the editing was better than Suicide Squad. I think it's, how, <laughs> it's definitely how you approach to view it. it. If you set your expectations going in, this mm -hmm. is fun, right. camp, 70s TV. Mm -hmm. It is Quincy with magic. Or more now, if you want to think about Grey's Anatomy with magic and porn stashes. That is how you go into this. Do you know what? I'd watch so much more Grey's Anatomy if there was magic on that show. Exactly. Yeah, you know, It would actually be interesting. Yeah. Uh, John, do you defend Doctor Strange, the TV movie from 1978? I do. I give it... Shock horror. A shock horror. But, I mean, I am only going to give it two and a half sexy Stevens out of five. <laughs> because, like, it is a it is a child of its time. Mm -hmm. it, it is from the 70s. And I, I think that's absolutely right. I mean, I looked at this fondly reminiscently uh really as well it's my favorite comic book character so yeah i mean i'm slightly there's a disappointment there that it was kind of wasn't picked up like the spider-man and the hulk but i can see why um you know and i think it is how you approach going in to watch this mm -hmm. it's it shouldn't be serious there's elements that are really really good um and I think the reason why I say it's a recommend, even though I've probably given it below three, um, that's just because of the visuals and that. But the music is good. Sorry, I say visuals. I, I mean, it's poor quality overall. But actually, the psychedelic trippy visuals, the special effects, mm. are, are actually really good for the time. It works well with the music once you've got over the intensity of it. And um, it has some fundamental beats that really chime with the character and, and with his associations, um, in, in particular about learning the art of being the Sorcerer Supreme, um, Wong and his relationship with the Ancient One. Um, it's a reverse 
Stephen Strange origin, and I kind of quite like that. So overall, there's a lot to to laugh and joke about how weird and wonderful and sexy and maybe inappropriate it is, uh, you know, or, or some of the wink wink nudges to camera, some of the the dodgy stuntman things, some of the lo- leaps of logic, but um, and it, it it isn't the best. Mm-hmm. So if you watch it expecting it to be probably what the movie is going to be or or anything from the Marvel Cinematic Universe up to date, you know, to date, you're going to be disappointed. But if you go in and go, right, this, relax, just let it wash through you, over you, and and, and enjoy it for the period piece that it is. Um, so that's why I give a recommend, because it's my favourite character, uh, even though... My score is probably uh, not. Uh, but Stephen Strange is sexy, and he deserves that 2.5 out of 5. Yeah, I like, I like that that's a 50-50. There's a 50-50 chance you'll like this, I think, yeah. is what you're saying. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah, okay, I like that. Derek, do you defend this episode of the cancelled TV pilot <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Strange? Do you know what? Uh, I kind of get what you mean, John. Um I've been lucky enough to have a TV show, also TV pilot, made out of uh, Nick Fury. That's um, true. <laughs> played by David Hasselhoff yeah, in the 80s. The um, and I can kind of see what you mean. When you've got your character and it's finally brought to life on screen, I can see why you'd, why you'd kind of give it a little bit more of a pass than you would um, if this was something that you weren't interested in at all. Uh, what I will say about it, and I think I mentioned it earlier on, if you can get through those first 20 minutes... Uh, so that you can get yourself into the uh, the type of show that it was going for. If you can get into the kind of 70s vibe, if you've never watched a 70s TV show, once you get through that, once you get to the point where um, where Strange meets Clea in the dream, um, I think from then on, there's actually quite a lot of good here. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There Definitely. really is. Uh, I think it's it's worth recommending from that point on. What I would say is most people are going to see this on YouTube, which means they're going to tire of it within the first five or six minutes. Um, we've already had some feedback from some of our listeners who've, who've attempted to watch it and have fallen asleep um, before getting into the story. <laughs> the so, so I can see that. So I don't want to oversell it to anybody. No. But I do think there is a reward for watching it through yeah. the end. I'm so glad we started here, and I'm so glad that we got the opportunity to see a version of Doctor Strange before a time where they could do CGI. Remember, the next version of Doctor Strange that we're going to be talking about is an animated version where they're going to be able to do some major mystical powers here. Uh, For the most part, the special effects we're talking about are, you know, lighting special effects, you know. It's over overlaying some lighting on top of a character to show that they're using powers. There's not a huge amount of extra special effects here, so don't be looking for the CGI fest that we will get when it comes to October. Absolutely. It's it's the dodgy, it's definitely the dodgy Doctor kind of graphics from <laughs> from from Doctor Who. Absolutely. I mean if you if you remember and Doctor Who and, uh, yeah. yeah if you remember Doctor Who Star Trek mm-hmm. um or I should say Doctor Who from the 80s yeah. and quite frankly even some of the um some from the the noughties um mm-hmm. have got some pretty dodgy character work which I think must be paying homage to to that but that's what they're going to say anyway yeah. it it's it's within that vein definitely. Yeah. So if you can handle that you can handle the the, the nameless one, mm. Beaker. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So I would, I would, I would recommend, and I would think if I think back to you know our version of the Incredible Hulk that we had at this time yeah. was an actor um, was Bill Bixby for the most part of the episode, and then another actor, um, Lou Ferrigno, painted green, uh, who was a bodybuilder, and that was the only CGI you had for. Oh, and the contact lenses. And the contact lenses. Yes. But yes, again, not CGI. <laughs> <laughs> but it was literally, you know, it would cut away and it would come back to another actor playing the part. So cheap enough program to produce for Amazing Spider-Man. It was a guy in a costume who threw ropes at people. That's basically yeah. it. it. There weren't even webbing. There was hardly anything there. We just got a little flash towards his face to show that he had a bit of spider sense, threw some webbing, and he beat up some, uh, some uh, bank robbers every week. This version, if this show had survived... It would be so interesting to see what they'd do with Doctor Strange. I can't imagine he would be busting robbers using the power of Vashanti, you know? Yeah. Uh, there would be so much that they have to build on here. I can understand why it didn't take off, unfortunately. But I think there's a lot here to, to kind of look at the potential. So, yes, I would defend uh, Doctor Strange 1978. Woohoo! So that's three defense yeah, for yeah. the first of our big It can only Strange. get better. I think it can. Do you know what I would I love? 
Do you, do you guys remember Mystery Science Theater 2000? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's going yeah. back. Yeah, yeah, I know. But imagine that. Watching Doctor Strange. Mm-hmm. That oh would be God. bloody hilarious. <laughs> oh my, guys, check it out. What Mystery Science, Mystery Science Theater 3000 is. Mm-hmm. And then just superimpose this in the background and you would understand how amazingly obvious and amazing this could be. Mm-hmm. Do you know what? I think that's kind of our podcast. There are three yeah. of us as well. I don't know which one of us are the robots and which one are the hosts. But yeah, let's not get into that. <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much for joining us, listeners, for this episode of Doctor Strange, Summer of Strange, uh, where we talked about the TV pilot for 1978. We hope you've at least enjoyed the podcast. If you didn't enjoy the uh, the episode, uh, you can watch it over on YouTube if we haven't spoiled too much for you. I think it's worth trying. Definitely try it out. And of course, remember, not only is the the Doctor Strange on YouTube to watch, but also if you uh, follow the podcast, leave a review on iTunes, um, you're in with a shout to um, join our competition and be a winner if you're pulled out of the hat. Um, there are some prizes on offer, all Doctor Strange related, comic books, electronic comic books, and uh, a Marvel pop uh, of Doctor Strange, can all I, on can offer. Can I just say... If- the pop is fab. He's looking yeah. at us right now from the table. He's very cool. He is looking rather cool and sexy. Uh-huh. <laughs> Make it steamy. <laughs> steamy strange. Uh, Dr. Steamy Strange. Um, you can... Uh, you can be in with a shout to win Dr. Steamy Strange um, on the competition. Just go over to iTunes, go to DefendersTVPodcast.com forward slash iTunes or any other good podcast catcher. Just search Defenders TV Podcast. Leave a review and send in an email to us to say that you've left a review just in case we miss it and because there are a lot of podcast catchers out there. So you ought to please just send in an email to say that you've left a review so that we can find you uh, because the reviews allow people who have never listen to our podcast before to get in touch and to begin uh, listening and um, so please leave a review mm-hmm. anything to do with the podcast and indeed anything to do with Stephen Strange if Absolutely. you wish Absolutely. Um, and make sure you send that email to feedback at defenders tv podcast.com we also have the functionality if you want to leave a voicemail and give it leave us uh, 90 seconds of your thoughts about the Doctor Strange shows as we lead up to Luke Cage it would be great to get some audio uh, audio voicemails coming in just go to our website defenders tv podcast.com and there will be a little link on the side saying uh, leave some audio feedback you can record it as many times as you want to and just send us your final version of uh, of your thoughts absolutely and of course there's also our facebook group go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash defenders tv podcast or our twitter handle at defenders cast join in the conversation about this summer of strange mm-hmm. uh, and all things related to doctor strange as well as the lead up to obviously luke cage at the end of september as it's as it's released in one global blob, blob, I suppose, <laughs> uh, on the 30th of September. Um, so, yeah, please uh, stay with us for that as well. And can I just say a huge thanks to Chris for joining us for this episode. He Yay! is our third host. Yay! It never feels the same without our third host Absolutely. Uh, here for our podcast. And we have been holding it because I really wanted your reaction. I'm so glad. <laughs> I'm so glad you didn't feel the whole thing was a waste of time and you did actually get through the whole thing. I did. It was, so. As I said, it was the beginning. It was like, what the hell are you making me watch? <laughs> oh, actually, this is quite good. Excellent. I think with that, again, thank you so much for listening. Um, we'll be back again with you next time. Talk to you soon. See you later, guys. Chat soon. Bye. You are banished to the dark dimension. <laughs>